Hi, um, I <clears throat> hope you're doing fantastic. Um, I'm here to talk about predictive modeling. I'm Sam Castillo, and I have experience as a data analyst for seven years working for some major brands like Expedia Group, um, Milliman, Willis Towers, as well as working on uh, being the founder of Pass My Exam, where I led data analysis to uh, do EDA, ETL, model training, cross-validation. This is a way that you can see how the statistics really applies and succeeds when other assumptions and uh, data science concepts don't make a lot of sense. I'm here to tell you that the statistics and the math does work out. So here's some of my lessons. Hope Modeling is about using X to predict Y. In our language, you write this as X as Y is predicted by X. In math, this says that Y is equal to F of X, where F is your model and X is your data. This will almost never happen perfectly, and so there will be a residual. We'll call this epsilon. So what we have is that this red line shows the expected value of the target. Or in other words, y hat is equal to the expected value of y. For our linear model, we say that this is beta 0 plus beta 1 x1 plus beta 2, x2, up to beta p, xp. So each y, i, which is um, a single scalar value, is a linear combination of x1, i, through x, i, p, plus some constant term, um, plus some constant term beta zero. And by plus, I don't mean, you know, literally plus, I mean uh, that there's, a, there's this beta zero term here, which is always um, the same, regardless of the other values of the data. So this line in the middle uh, shows the expected value of the target. And this is actually a random variable. Because it is, uh, we can look at the, its distribution. Uh, so, in the case of a um, ordinary least squares model, um, we assume that these uh, distributions are approximately um, symmetric and normal. Now, they don't actually have to be normal, um, but that makes it more convenient to uh, do other things like hypothesis testing and creating confidence intervals. Um, but they should at least be, you know, symmetric. So you could have distributions that have like longer tails than a normal distribution, um, and that's fine. But the real question is, um, how can we choose the best values of beta? Right? How could you choose uh, these values so that you're minimizing your residual sum of squares? Well, one method would be, um, you know, maximum likelihood, which is the statistical method, where you, um, you know, assume a distribution, like you say, this is, uh, these are all normal distributions, um, and then we're going to create this mathematical construct, take the derivative, set it equal to zero, and so forth. We organize these variables into um, matrices, for example, x might be a 3 by 2 matrix. So it has x11, x21, x31, and then x12, x22, x32, like so. Our y variable is always the target value. So we'd say that y would be y1, y2, y3. And in the health costs example, 
This would be the cost of a first patient, the cost of a second patient, and the cost of a third patient. As actuaries, we typically model financial amounts. Let's say that we're looking at health insurance costs. Each of these rows is a person. Some of these people are very expensive. Others are, uh, you know, they might be younger, they exercise frequently, so they have lower costs. But then uh, as people get older, there are just more costs associated with uh, regular aging and maintenance. And so we want to know, um, based on several variables, what the person's cost is going to be. So uh, if you had a really simple model, you would just say that uh, your Y value is approximately equal to um, some number, call it beta, times uh, the person's. You see this, this standard error. Now, if you remember, um, the beta values that, that we're working with are actually um, estimates. And so we actually call them um, like beta hat. And we'll say that this comes from a, a, a particular distribution, such as um, a T distribution, um, which is like a normal distribution, but it has uh, longer tails. So based on that, you can calculate the T value, and then um, the P value is the probability of getting a value that's more extreme than this one. Um, so if you have a distribution like this, and you shade these lines you know, on the outer tails like that, the, P, the T value is, the P value is the probability of having um, the size of the coefficient um, which is greater than that. Uh, so intuitively, this means that if there was no relationship between the predictor variable and the outcome, what's the probability that you'd get a coefficient of that magnitude purely by chance? Uh, next you see the um, number, and then um, you could then have a different a different bar for, for each year, um, but uh, this so there are different ways that you could critique this. Um, as you can see, we're still down only to task four. Uh, here's another EBA question. Um, um, so you got a lot of. A lot of different um, choices for your for your models, different observations. 